at 120 to 30 dollars is pretty reasonable. Let's take a look. So here's the tablet. And funny enough, the specs do say rear facing camera, but as you can see, the camera is actually on the front. Like a lot of smaller, cheaper tablets, they look like an iPad. A single button here on the side. On the side, we do have the power button on the top. There's a menu button, a volume button, and the microphone hole. On the right hand side, we do have the speaker slot, a micro SD connector. We have a data connector, which I'll tell you about in a minute, and a headphone slot, and a power connector, and another speaker slot. Nothing on the bottom. It is uh, plastic, but it's, it's pretty strong considering for what it is. I would not say that it's unusable. Also in the box, we have a charger. It comes with a stylus, and it is a resistive touch screen. And we also have a user guide, very basic user guide, but it's sufficient. The other thing, I said there's a data connector on the side. Well, you plug in this little dongle and you get a Ethernet connector as well as two USB ports. So that just basically plugs into the side, it gives you extra connectivity. It does come with Android 1.6 and it's been upgraded to Android 2.1. It's much better than the 1.6. Let's power it up and I'll show you what it's all about. It is resistive, but it's not too bad. It's just a, just a bit sluggish. You get the menu. You'll see a lot of different items already installed on the menu. And it has a large suite of Android applications. What else can we see? A lot of tablets now put controls up on the notification bar on the top. Home button, a power button, level button, a, a power button, a volume button, a menu button, and a back button. And we also have a screenshot button. It takes a picture of the screen. So that's some of the features are very usable. Sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what's going on because it's a little slow. Bring up your menu. You can see the settings. Your regular settings. You can change a lot of settings on this. Okay, so let's go into the browser here. See how it works. Let's go to uh, the good old Android Spin site, and we'll see how that looks. It's uh, an inexpensive tablet. Is what you get for uh, hundred and twenty, thirty dollars. It has orientation. We'll just upright this tablet. And you can see the orientation works just fine. It brings up the Android Spin page. So, hey, you want something to play around with? You want to do some Facebook and Twittering? It's just fine. You can adjust the volume. You can use these buttons on the notification bar on the top. It definitely works better with the stylus. It's slightly sluggish. But the Android spin page is quite intensive, but it's not too bad. You can browse. So let's go back to the home page. There you have it. Uh, this is uh, a lot of different sites you can go to, and you can always add your own Android apps. So this one's running at uh, 533 megahertz. 
as far as the central processing unit. It's, uh, you know, it's not like the 3 gigahertz that we have on big computers, but it's very usable. And you can put a lot of different things on it. Hours of movies and days of MP3s. It's great.